stopping the judgment. Okay, not because judgment is bad or good, but because judgment is a box that it's holding you in. Judgment of self is not helping you make the right or wrong decision. <clears throat> okay, you can intuit what is right or wrong, or you can intuit what is beneficial or harmful for your life easier if you're not judging the actions. So if you are judging yourself and you stop and listen to your intuition instead and sit with the judgment as separate from yourself, you can do things like ask yourself where that came from. Ask if this belongs to you. Ask if this judgment of yourself is really your voice. Ask if you know, ask, it's, it's through asking questions to yourself that you can unlock the mind and heart piece, okay? Because you're asking questions that move you forward, not questions that hold you back. Asking questions like, why is this happening to me? Why am I always so bad? Why am I so wrong? Not those questions, but the ones that move you forward. Whose reality is this? Whose question is this? Whose decision is this? Who's put this idea in my head? Most likely you're going to say, oh, it's the patterning. I can see it because it's obvious, right? My parents never let me make a decision. My parents would criticize every decision I made. I, things were never good enough for them. Okay, so that was put in my head. My emotions believe it. Okay, yes, your emotions believe it. So it's finding a place inside of you that can be kind to those parts of yourself that are telling you these judgmental things, be kind to those parts of yourself, you can say to yourself, ah, yeah, there's that judgment again. Okay, it's been useful to keep me what I think is safe. Kind of not necessary right now. Can it step aside? You know what I'm saying? Like, or you're to your emotions. Yeah, of course it, of course it feels like it, it hit to the ego to feel wrong or to do something incorrect or to be you know, imperfect. Of course it feels that way. And also our mind, this loop, I like to be outside of it. So I'm going to let that feeling sit there. I'm going to breathe some love into that area and then I'm going to do something anyway. So decision making and learning to trust yourself is can happen in baby steps. So if you're needing to make a decision, you know, red or blue, <laughs> and simple decisions can be really hard. It's not funny because it, it's actually very, um, it's, you get in fight flight. Okay, it throws you straight into the amygdala response of fight flight when you have had trauma around decision making. So recognize that, look around and realize no one's out to get you. In this very moment, if I choose red or blue, no one's out to get me, okay? If blue is the wrong answer, okay, then I can almost always change my mind and go with red, right? And that doesn't make me a bad person because I made the wrong choice for the situation. Wrong being a judgment, right? Which is not, it, it's just a judgment. It's not a reality. The reality might be red and blue are equally beneficial. Does that make sense? Like each decision you make is going to lead you down a path, okay? And what we're afraid of, I think, a lot of times is that the path is not the right path because we've been told we can't choose the right path. And if you're trying to make a decision like who to date after you've been with a toxic ex, that's huge. So slow it way the heck down. You don't have to be married in two days. You get to take time and know a person. And if that person can't wait for you to do that, they were never the right person for you in particular in the first place. You're not messing things up by slowing down slow your thoughts down and your emotions down by staying present to yourself, present to your own life, present to your own passions, your own joys, the things you do. Don't jump into somebody else's life, right? And, and, and mix yours with them too fast because yeah, you lose yourself. So staying present to yourself, if, if it's a dating situation, because this is, I think the question was asked around that, like making a choice. That's a big question. That's sort of like if you had toxic parents and say you never want to date because you just can't handle people, but you're trying to make a friend or you're trying to trust a coworker in a certain situation. Yeah, it's super hard to trust people. So it's through allowing that other person to be who they are. You be who you are and you watch the behaviors. You watch the behaviors of the other person. You watch the behaviors of yourself around that person. Are you the person you want to be when you're around them? Do you feel 
the ability to expand your life and open your life around that person. So that comes with every decision. Okay, so come back to the decision making in general. And if you're making a decision between taking a vacation in August or September and you're freaking out because you can't figure out which is better and what if you do the wrong thing and what if it's not right and and you're and you're all up in your head take a second okay here's an exercise take a second when you are all up in your head about a petty decision that really you you know logically it doesn't matter which one they're both good <laughs> right they both work take a second come back into yourself by breathing your breath you can follow your breath in and out as it naturally happens. Okay. And you can, that, that is a natural human thing just to breathe. Right. So as you're breathing, just exhale in your thoughts, anything that is judgment. It's good, bad, it's right or wrong. Just be like, it doesn't matter. Okay. And then breathe in. I wonder what, I wonder which I'm going to do. So breathe in a question and breathe out anything that feels like judgment for like three seconds. Okay. And as you do that, just feel your body calm down. Notice it. our mind and our body are connected. And if our body is relaxed, it sends a signal to our mind, all's good. Right. And then we aren't thrown into fight flight, which throws us into the amygdala response, which means we're in fight flight and we cannot think from that place. So because you legitimately can't, okay. Your brain changes. It goes into a different um, a different way of thinking it goes into survival. The decision, if you're, if you're calming yourself down that way and you're exhaling and just imagining the judgment of the situation to go and the inhale. So then ask yourself, I wonder what is possible and sit with that question for just a second before you look at the situation and see if it helps. Okay. And if it doesn't throw it away <laughs> and if it does keep going. So learning to get out of that fight flight through being present to yourself. That's what I was saying. How are you showing up for yourself? Are you showing up as a judge? How, I mean, honestly, that's, a, that's an honest question. How are you showing up for yourself? If you had to write a character out for how you are with yourself, what would that character be? Would it be a judge, a prison guard, a, you know, a mean father, a mean mother, a, a, someone critical, right? Or would it be a loving friend, a partner, a whatever, loyal dog, right? Like, how are you showing up for yourself? Because how we show up for ourselves on the inside is how we're talking to ourselves on the inside, which will either repeat the pattern of the toxic people, or it can be something new. The thing is, you guys, you have to create your own life. You have to step outside of the patterning and the conditioning and create a new reality.